Welcome to the Sports Spectrum Podcast, where faith and sports collide. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Welcome to the show, everyone. My name is Jason Romano. This is the Sports Spectrum Podcast, episode number 67. Welcome to the program. As always, you can download and subscribe this podcast on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, everywhere podcasts are found. And of course, all of our content, including a daily devotional, first thing every single morning, is available at sportspectrum.com. And I just want to wish you all a happy new year. It's been a wonderful 2017, just the debut of this podcast and so many wonderful things that God has been doing in all of our lives, especially with this ministry. And so we just want to say thank you to you for everyone checking out the podcast. 2018 is here, and we're excited to see what the new year brings for Sports Spectrum. Today's guest on the show is Drew Holiday. He was an all-star in 2013 with the Philadelphia 76ers. He's currently a starting point guard for the NBA's New Orleans Pelicans. He was selected in the first round of the 2009 NBA draft by the Sixers, and then he was traded to New Orleans in July of 2013. He's currently averaging a career-high 18 points per game to go along with six assists and four rebounds for a very talented Pelicans team competing for the playoffs in the Western Conference. In July of 2013, Holiday married USA Women's National Soccer Team midfielder Lauren Cheney. The two first met at UCLA at a women's basketball game there during uh, Drew's only season at the school. And in September of 2016, Holiday took an indefinite leave of absence from the Pelicans to take care of his wife after she was diagnosed with a brain tumor. The following month, Lauren, his wife, who had the brain tumor, actually had brain surgery. And this was just weeks after giving birth to the couple's first child, a daughter also named Drew, Drew Tyler Holiday. On July 6, 2017, Drew signed a five-year, $126 million contract to return to the Pelicans. And this episode of the podcast features Drew talking to our own Sports Spectrum's Justin Adams. Now, this is Justin's debut appearance on the podcast, and he went over to a shoot-around recently here in Denver and talked with uh, Drew Holiday about where his faith began in Christ and, and how his prayer life has evolved and how it's brought him closer to his wife during one of these scary times in his life. So without further ado, here is our interview with New Orleans Pelicans point guard Drew Holiday. Who introduced you to the Christian faith? My, my parents, my family. Um, ever since I was a little kid, I've been in Sunday school. Um, that was our main focus, like before sports and all that. So um, going to church on Wednesdays and Saturdays and Sundays, we we always did, and we were pretty close to our our church community. So, um, yeah, man, just from from a young age, I've, I've been I've been a Christian. Do you remember the moment where you made it? You know, everybody says they have that moment where they made their faith their own. Uh, right. What was the time that it became your own faith? Um, you know, there's a lot of time where, uh, obviously, just because my, I mean, my. Sometimes you do something because your family does it, and it maybe sometimes it feels like it's tradition or whatever. But I'll probably say once I kind of got on my own, which is um, once I got to the league. Uh, so I might have been 18, 19 years old, where I had to make kind of my own decisions and uh, be able to kind of fend for myself. You know what I mean? Uh, obviously, at the age of, obviously before that, um, I believed in everything and. I, I, I won't necessarily say that like I didn't have any struggles, but I, I do feel like it was pretty. E- I mean, it was pretty easy. High school was, was easy. It was fun. I mean, we won in sports and basketball, everything we did, and um, and then once you got get to college, and I stayed home. Uh, I went to UCLA, and it's 25 minutes from from my parents' house. Uh, but once I got to Philly, and I kind of had to be an adult and be able to handle myself around other professionals who were way older than me some of them had kids and some of them probably or some of them did things that like at the time I wasn't sure if I wanted to get into or not to get into Um, I had to make decisions like that so uh, I would probably say at that point I I really like 
it just kind of clicked for me. It was like, yeah, the things that I believe in and, and the faith that I have just kind of grew from there. You know, we I know for myself as a young man that I surround myself with a lot of, you know, older brothers who, you know, even journalists or just people of the faith that will help me stay grounded. Um, who are some guys when you got to Philly that, again, you have so many questions making this faith your own, but who are some guys that you surrounded yourself around? Well, a lot of the closest people to me were my family members. Uh, I mean, I would always call my mom and my dad and my older brother and my older brother was still in college at the time, but um, they were definitely guys, uh, a couple of the chaplains in, in, in Philly um, that I could always go to and ask questions to because, again, they were there and they were available. Um, Evan Turner was one of them, Andre Iguodala, where we go to chapel and we talk about things and, and just be able to share experiences. And, and, again, Andre was older than me. I think when I came in, he might have been, like, in this, I don't know, sixth or seventh year or something like that. So... Um, for him to share his experience with me and me going through something like that really helped. You talked about, you know, you didn't have a lot of challenges early on in your Christian faith, but um, just a little bit ago, um, you know, last year you had a huge, huge challenge within your, your faith, um, you know, with everything within your wife and whatnot. Um, how were you able to, um, first of all, when you heard about the news, just with your wife and, and um, your daughter, um, how did your prayer life, how did your, child, your life with the Lord or your relationship with Christ, how did that change? Um, I would say it changed because I started to reach more toward him. And I and I, I don't know if it sounds cliche or whatever, but I feel like a lot of times when something bad happens, that's when you start to, I guess at times, that's when you can start to seek God more. And again, some people veer away from him. But um, at that point, uh, I felt like because myself and my wife are both believers, um, we did that together. And that's something that we could do together, which is pray together every night. Uh, before we go to sleep, pray for our daughter, pray for her health. Um, and again, we had my family and her family who was also praying for us, but there was we had such a big community at our church in New Orleans. Um, my teammates, uh, again, my wife played soccer, so nationwide, uh, once everybody kind of heard about the news, uh, you can feel the support from everywhere. But um, I think for me and her, that, that was definitely a pivotal moment because uh, that was something that it, it brought us closer together, getting closer to God. Mm -hmm. How, when you say it brought you guys closer together, like in what ways did it make your, your marriage stronger and also your faith stronger uh, through going through this uh, situation? Right. Um, again, just believing, uh, believing that God can heal any disease. He is a miracle worker. And uh, just to be able to have faith in that and to have peace with that, with, with whatever decision um, he makes because ultimately it's it, it's up to him and it's not up to us. Wow. Um, just a couple more questions because I know you got to run, but what was your prayer life like before then and how has it changed to where you're sitting at right now? Right. Um, before that, I feel like I prayed a lot. Uh, I, I, I tried to pray when everything would go well. Um, um, do my devotion every day. I'd set my alarm every morning and say, do devotion, do your devotion. Um, but uh, I do think that uh, me being hurt and going through that struggle, uh, that was one of the times where like I didn't get as close to God as as I wanted to because I got I got hurt one time, but the injury reoccurred again, and I think that second time is when I started getting closer to Him. Definitely. And then the 12 games that you are you know left tending to your wife as well. Um, was there something spiritual, something that you learned just as a husband, being able to care for your wife during that time? Again, that she's the most important thing to me. Um, obviously, we were having a daughter as well, and this was going to be my first experience with that, and just wanted her to come out healthy. And uh, and even though our daughter was born early, about five and a half weeks early, um, just being able to, uh, I guess, kind of have this this positive. Uh, belief that everything was going to be okay. Yeah, definitely. Uh, last one, because I know you gotta, you gotta run. Um, what's God telling you right now? Like, what's some scripture verses that you're reading over, um, or books that you're sitting on? Um, one scripture is Philippians four six and seven, and it's um, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Uh, ask God for what you need and thank Him for everything that you have. If you do this, you experience God's peace, and that. Just every time I hear it, it just kind of feels like that's what I do when I pray. Tell God what I need and thank Him for everything He's done. And uh, my, my pastor, Pastor Manley in New Orleans, uh, told me one time, uh, 
or he asked me one time if if this morning um, or sorry if you didn't thank God for everything that you had yesterday and this morning you ended up without it it was something along the lines of if you don't like if, you, if I didn't thank God for everything I had yesterday like what if all that I didn't have today so my family uh, playing basketball um, like my daughter financially him supporting me and, and being able to bless me the friends and support that I have like so every day I think about that and I try to thank him every day uh, for blessing me with all, all that he's given me appreciate it no, thank you so much and we do thank our very own Justin Adams interviewing New Orleans Pelicans point guard Drew Holiday here on the Sports Spectrum podcast Drew Drew's story is one that we'll be following for the rest of this season for sure. He's having, like I mentioned before the interview, a career high, uh, a career type of season, averaging 18 points and just doing really great things with a a Pelican squad that has a lot of talent uh, out there in the NBA's Western Conference. So we appreciate Drew joining us here on the podcast. And we appreciate you for tuning in. Check us out over at SportsSpectrum.com. You can also tweet at us at Sports underscore Spectrum. And you can reach me at Jason Romano as well on Twitter, or you can email me directly. Let us know what you think of the podcast, Jason at SportsSpectrum.com. And one thing I want to mention to everyone listening is in 2018, we really want to make a point to tell the stories of people that you don't know. So if you have a story to tell a of a coach, of a player, maybe they played in high school or a low Uh, Division three college or somebody that we just haven't heard a lot about, but you know that they have an incredible story of faith, please email me, jason at sportspectrum.com. Let us know about the stories that you know about that we may not know about so that we can share them and tell them on the Sports Spectrum podcast or over at sportspectrum.com. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next time. Happy New Year, everyone, right here on the Sports Spectrum podcast. 